Hi friend, my name is Hunter from Interactive and in today's video we'll take a look at how to create this spotlight lighting effect inside of Blender and so this is just using one light and we're just using a simple area light but it can create this really nice effect inside of Blender and so I've got my scene here and I'll pop a version down in the description that you can use and you can open this up and it will look similar to this maybe I just change the label but what you can do is open it up and follow along in this video if you're interested in product visualization our blender course is the perfect place to start learn how to create impressive product CGI that looks professional and realistic with lifetime access to updates and new courses, you'll have endless opportunities to grow and refine your skills. Enroll now and take the first step towards becoming a pro in product visualization. So basically what's happening here is we've got an area light that's pointing at the same angle that the, the tube here is facing. And then you can adjust some of the settings in the lights to create this effect. So what I'm going to do is turn off the finished and we'll turn on the working. I'll show you how to create this. So we can go shift A and we can pop in an area light here. And so we can just bring this area light up a little bit and by default the area light has got a lot of settings that we don't really need for this. So we're going to push and adjust a lot of these. So the first thing we're going to look at is maybe the size of the area light. So I can scale this on the X quite a bit and we'll scale this also on the Y. Something like this. Now we want this light to sort of come from the side here. But before we do that, I'm just going to adjust some of the settings of the light. So first of all, our light down here is a little bit too dim. So we'll push the power up. Let's go something like 300 and this will increase the wattage of our light and add more light into the scene. Now I'm not going to go too far here, it's still a little bit washed out. But the reason I'm not pushing it too far is because I'm going to adjust the spread here. And so this tells Blender how far do I want my light to spread. So the best way to see this is to adjust our light. Let's go R and Y and we can rotate this on this center pivot point and I'll just type in 90 and I'll press the negative and you can use your number pad to do this. Now I'll just go 7 and look straight on the top view and that's number pad 7. Um, and I believe you can also hold or click the Z up here, maybe it's, that's the easiest way. Now I can press G, drag this over here and then we'll press R and rotate this in the direction of our tube here. Now I'm going to look at it straight on and I sort of want this to be angled down. So we can go R and we can press X and X to just have a look at our local axis. So we actually want the Y axis so I can go R and then Y and Y. And so that'll go local axis of the area light here. And I'll just point it straight at the tube here. Now we can take a look at the spread. So the, basically the spread tells Blender how much do I want this light to spread out or where do I want to direct the light or how much do I want it to be spread out from the center here. So what we can do is type in something like 45 and it will be sent out 45 degree angle from the center. So this is not quite what we want yet. So we'll push it even more. So we'll grab, come in here and we'll go something like down here, we'll push it to say, I think I had three. And so this is really far. And so when we have three here, it's a really straight beam and it's coming through the center here with really harsh edges. So the more you push it, the harsher the edges will be and we can get this sort of effect. So another thing I can do is, 
I'm just going to move it down a little bit. Another thing I can rotate it around the center here so we can just use this. Go to 3D cursor. And what we can do is press R and Y and Y again to just sort of rotate around that center. I'm going to bring it up so that it lights more of the label and our shadow here decreases. So next what I can do is just sort of shift this. I'm still in the center pivot point. Something like this. I don't want it to be as sharp on the edge, so let's go up to three. Can also go up to four maybe. We can scale this on the Y axis, the local Y axis. So I just want to make this a skinnier beam. Something like this. And there you go. Another thing I want to just adjust the angle of this. So that it sort of looks like it's going the same direction as tube here. And the only other thing that I've got set up in this scene is a big light or a big, um, it's just basically the ground plane just placed up here. And the closer you move it, it acts as a reflector or a bounce card, which could be used in photography. And it just bounces more light straight back into the scene. And I've just added it over here a bit and it gives this nice edge down here. You can see it in there. And in there. Another thing you wanna make sure to do is make sure that your world settings haven't got anything in here. So you by default set to a value of one, but that's gonna to need to add light to it and it will add this gray light into it. So I usually just bump it to zero when I start a scene. And I also want to remember to adjust down here in our render settings down under color management. I just want to make sure that what we have is a higher contrast. So filmic by default, if we go none, is sort of a little bit washed out. So sometimes it's really good to add in some high contrast that gives you the nice blacks in here and it makes it sort of pop a bit more. But then you're ready to render that out. Now I've also been playing around with some extra settings in the latest version of Blender, so 3.5. If we drop down here, what we can do is come down to the compositor and just click always. And so what that will do is turn on any compositing that we might want to do within our viewport. So we no longer have to render it, go to our compositing tab. It's done uh, live and in real time. So I can come over here and go to our compositor under here. And what I've just basically done is added in a glare and I've added the settings streak. And in here, you can see it's just added a little streak in here. And I've pretty much used the default settings. And that just helps add a little bit more pop than the default here. As you can see, it's just got nothing. But when we add a streak, then I've had a little bit of fog here. You might want to increase this. So medium, make it a little bit bigger. I've got it set to high so that the threshold's high. You could also bump the streak amount up or down if you wanted to. I had it set to four and that just adds a nice little bit of touch here. And we could also change the threshold. If I go like this, hold down shift. And it will just allow a bit more light in. And then I'll pause this and I'll go ahead and render out the image. So it's fairly simple and easy lighting setup to do. And you can pretty much do it with most renders. You don't have to do it uh, laying flat. You can have it upright on something like you could have it on a concrete brick or something like that. And just a spotlight or a ray shining on it. It's really skinny or, and you can change all the dimensions here if you would like, and it's just a really simple, easy lighting setup to 
do. If you have any questions, drop them down below and I'll check them out. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to stick around for the next tutorials coming. All right, I'll see you in the next one.